What I want to do with you now is show the Markovnikov addition of water to a triple bond. And I want to make sure I do this with a terminal alkyne. If you do this with an internal alkyne, you have no selectivity between the two carbons because they would both be secondary. What you're going to be looking for if you're doing a Markovnikov addition is the materials on the arrow. And they're very similar to the conditions we've seen for a Markovnikov addition of water to a double bond. It involves, again, sulfuric acid and water. The difference here is you also have mercury 2 sulfate. It's a G. Sorry, that doesn't look much like a G. But that's a G right there. And there would be water and heat. Now, I'm not going to go through the mechanism of this. They're not entirely sure how that works, but they believe that the mercury helps complex one of the pi bonds in the transition state. The mechanism is a little iffy, but it does do a Markovnikov addition of water. And what the result of this process is, is to make something called an enol. But the hydrogen adds to the side with the most number of hydrogens, like we would expect for a Markovnikov addition. And the OH groups add to the other side. This is what you're going to get if you're doing a Markovnikov addition of water to a triple bond. What happens at this point is a tautomerization. Now, tautomerizations are not resonance structures. They are literally different molecules, but they are in equilibrium with each other. And it's a transfer of a hydrogen from one location to another. It's going to be this hydrogen that is moved. And in this particular reaction, the conditions are acidic. So we're going to show the tautomerization mechanism in acid for this enol. So I'm going to redraw the enol from the last slide. you have an acid present and as we always see with sulfuric acid it is going to act as a proton donor so the OH bond is going to be broken giving up a proton so you want to think about who can take a proton there are actually two options for this one of them is the oxygen it has lone pair electrons and it can pick up the proton it is absolutely possible but it's not going to be as good an option because that positive charge would be localized on the oxygen. It would have nowhere else to go. A better option is to give that proton to the carbons of the double bond. And because this is doing Markovnikov, you're going to give the hydrogen to the primary carbon, not the secondary carbon. And this is actually going to result in a more stable carbocation. What we get as a result of this is a carbocation that is resonance stabilized. So I'll show the fact that I'm giving this hydrogen here to the primary carbon. I hope you can see that now, but it is there. And you have the secondary carbocation. This is unlike other carbocations because it does have resonance stabilization. When you are drawing resonance structures, it's important to remember that you cannot move sigma bonds. But you can move pi bonds and lone pair electrons. So what I'm about to draw is a resonance arrow, not a mechanism arrow. But this oxygen can donate some of its lone pair electrons to make a resonance structure. And that positive charge can be delocalized onto the oxygen as well. And this new resonance structure I've drawn is actually the predominant resonance structure because in this case everybody gets an octet. The one on the left, the carbon doesn't have an octet. I know it has the positive charge, but everybody doesn't have an octet. So this is actually the predominant resonance structure here because everybody has an octet. And it doesn't matter which of these two you draw. They're both there. They're, it's the same ionic species. Okay. But this is what we have. Now the other species we have in solution at this point is HSO4- or you can use water. Either one of those would be acceptable. 
I'm going to use water, okay? But it is now going to act as a base and take the proton from the oxygen, and I'm going to use red to show mechanism arrows. But if oxygen picks it up here, you give the electrons back to the oxygen. If you want to show it from this resonance structure, you take the proton and give this pair of electrons here to make a double bond. You can do it from either one of these resonance structures and make the same product. And you'll make what's called the keto form. And you can see in this case it's acetone. And that's what we're talking about is the keto form. It makes a carbonyl group. And you've regenerated the acid catalyst. And this can go backwards and forwards. That's why it's at equilibrium. But this is the preferred, preferred um, species and solution. The keto forms tend to be more stable. And that's how we make a carbonyl compound. Notice it has the same number of carbons as what we've seen previously. And that's really useful since the only other reaction we've done where you produce something like this is the ozonolysis reaction. And um, there we actually had to break a carbon-carbon bond. In this case, we don't do that.